Hmm. Playing against a red white death and taxes build. Yeah, this is Itai Ben Sasan. It's white red taxes. So this is still mostly death and taxes in that it, it's it's the mon it's mostly a white deck. Um, it uses recruiter of the guard to then get access to a lot of one ofs. Uh, the red card in the main deck is Magus of the Moon. Yep. And the recruiter of the guard conveniently. That one tutors on toughness. You purely, previously you would see Imperial Recruiter, but that one can't tutor for Flicker Wisp, whereas Recruiter of the Guard can. All right, so Itai starts off on an Aether Vial. Brennan with Sensei's Divine Top, so players kind of trading the Hallmark one mana artifacts of their decks. Uh, we should import the second land for Ben Sasan. And right now, no plays. Though, interestingly enough, Itai not using his Reshid in port. Just wonder will, what he's going to leave the mana up for. Does have one of those copies of Magus of the Moon in his hand. If he can sneak that in with Aether Vial, I'm not sure Brennan's going to see that one coming. Mm -hmm. Porting at the end step makes a good amount of sense here. If you port on upkeep, Brennan just, just spins the top. the top, and that's likely the plan for the mana for the whole turn cycle anyway. You tie Vial's Mother of Runes in on end step, then goes to turn three here. Mother Runes is really good against the grindy value decks. Against Miracles specifically, Terminus makes it less of a factor. But it will insulate Itai against Swords to Plowshares very nicely. And this time Itai goes for the up the upkeep port. On Volcanic Island. Brandon just drawing a card. He'd looked at the top three on Itai's end step. Place Flooded Strand says go. So Apostle Magus of the Moon from Itai is not going to have too much impact. It depends if Brennan sees it coming. If Itai ha has that vial on three and taps it, Brennan would have to fetch her basic planes before he sees Magus of the Moon. Once Itai puts that card into play, then that Flood of Strand is a mountain. And off <coughs> basic planes were shot in port, Magus of the Moon is very likely just not on Brennan's radar. Stoneforge getting sort of fire and ice. Now Itai's going to tap Aether Vial on three, and here's where Brennan's kind of caught in an awkward spot. Magus the Moon in play. Brennan does not get to respond with Flooded Strand, and now does not have white mana available. Mm -hmm. And the, he has one land left over in hand, and it's Cavernous Souls. That's not going to solve his white mana woes. No. So a <laughs> that red splash off, off the white red taxes deck doing a ton of work here. Now, it looks like there is a basic planes in the top three for Brennan, so it's not as back-breaking as it could have been. Mm -hmm. We're still in a position where if Brennan's able to get a Terminus Miracle that, he'll solve a lot of his problems. All right. Going to go ahead and cast Brainstorm. Sees another top. We'll see if there's a Terminus in hand that he can put back on the top of the deck. It, though I don't believe he has one just yet. Mm -hmm. Looks like he has access to a Swords to Plowshares, but that one's kind of a non-starter in the face of Mother of Runes. Brainstorm's put two back. Digs one deeper, finds another Swords. That still doesn't play here. So he puts basic planes down. Usually, two swords at least lets you solve Mother of Runes, but because he only has one mana, one white mana, because of the Magus right. of the Moon, that's just not going to work here. He can take two turns to do it. He can plow on Itai's turn and then plow in his own turn, but in the meantime, he's just kind of getting beat up by this sword. Sword of Fire and Ice is going to come in on the end step for Itai, and it will connect, being put onto Magus of the Moon. And Stoneforge and Magus will both attack. That's going to be for five and seven if it connects. Mm -hmm. Sword of Fire and Ice was always my favorite sword. I think just on stats, it's it's the most one of might be the most powerful of the swords. Well, it says draw a card, which I am down for every day of the week. Now Brennan down to thirteen. Now Etai's own mana actually is be, is is being choked by that ether vial. He's got one basic planes. He has Cavern of Souls, Plateau, and Rashadon Port. He's actually going to be able to cast Phyrexian and Revoker. In response, Brennan will spin top. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those three creatures have actually all come into play off the Aether Vial. 
Uh, so Itai is committing a lot of stuff into a potential Terminus, though because right. they got the Sword of Fire and Ice hit on the last turn after Brennan looked at so many cards, he can be relatively confident that Brennan does not have access to that card. So in response, Brennan spins top. Revoker lands, names Sensei's Divining top. Now on end step, Brennan is going to attempt to Swords to Plowshares, the Magus, the Moon. This is, he's hoping that Itai uses Mother Runes to protect here. And he will. The Magus is really the problem he wants to solve. He either resolves it, gets it off the table with this plow or another one. This is bad news for Brennan, though. The hope for Brennan was that he would untap, draw that second Swords to Plowshares, Swords away the, the Magus of the Moon, crack a fetch land, and his, then, then after shuffling, his deck would have a Terminus. Mm -hmm. However, Itai, on that end step, after the Swords, he puts Sanctum Prowl into play, names one. So now Brennan can't cast a Swords to Plowshares that he draws, can't cast a Brainstorm. And we're in a spot where Brennan knows that at least knew up to this point the top three cards of his deck. None of them are Terminus, and he just has to naturally draw through them. Right, so now he gets to look maybe one card deeper, but has to because he's after the draw step. Well, he can't uh, no, he ponder, can. he brainstorm, has... he can't spin top. He just has to naturally draw cards. The Prelate stops all the blue cantrips. The top's shut off by Revoker. And he knows at least the next two cards in his deck are not Terminus. Right. Uh, right. He can draw one deeper, I suppose, with that that Vendillion click in his hand. Mm. But but that's it. And Vendillion actually, click's no, not a castable here. No, he has three mountains and just the two basics. Yeah, he has more or less been locked out of this game. Snapcaster Mage will flash into play as a blocker. Cannot block Magus of the Moon, as that is pro blue. It is, looks like he's going to try to put it in front of Sanctum Prelate. Itai is going to go ahead and give that protection from blue. And we are on to a second game. Death and Taxes in the hands of Itai Ben Sasan takes the first one down. That was a very sneaky Magus of the Moon, but that was really the story of the entire game. There was some follow-up. It was really well navigated by Itai. But once he got ahead with that Magus of the Moon, it was uh, just kind of academic for him to follow up in ways that stopped Brennan from playing the game. All right, we're going to get to Cyborg in just a second. But in the meantime, Star City Games wants to tell you about the next event we have coming up in just, well, a next Grand Prix we have coming up. It's just a month away. It's going to be the first Grand Prix that you can play with Amonkhet Limited. It is Grand Prix Richmond. On May 5th through the 7th, make plans to be part of Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Richmond. Register by Sunday, April 23rd for the Amonkhet Limited Format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and receive an exclusive playmat featuring Glory Bound Initiate. Select the three-day Infinite Challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price, while also walking away with the exclusive Glory Bound Initiate playmat. All Friday challenges are also Grand Prix Trials. Come out early and compete for buys in the main event and more chances to claim a Glory Bound Initiate playmat. Prefer 100 card formats? Register for the Ultimate Commander Package to play in four Commander On Demand events and take home a Commander vs. Playmat and Ultimate Guard Boulder Deck Case. Want to play on Magic's grandest stage? Compete in the Pro Tour Qualifier on Sunday and receive a Progenitus Foil promo just for playing, plus the chance for an invitation to Pro Tour Hour of Devastation in Kyoto, Japan. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Richmond's many special guests including cosplayer Vanessa Martin and an artist alley full of fan favorites, headlined by guest of honor John Avon. Be part of Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Richmond today. My fifth through seventh is going to be Grand Prix Richmond. So back to our legacy match here for Brennan DeCandio. And look at his sideboard. Uh, he did what well, really caught off balance by that Magus of the Moon. Don't think that's a mistake he will make again. Looking at his sideboard, got options of uh, Pyroblast, Blood Moon, Containment Priest, Surgical Extraction, Wear Tear, Council's Judgment, Monastery Mentor, Pithy Needle, Fluster Storm, Rest in Peace, and Gideon, Ally of Zendikar. It feels like a lot of the best cards in this matchup for Brennan are already in the main. It is. Uh, that's certainly the case. The Terminus, the Swords of Plowshares are really his best stuff. He has some uh, ways to deal with Aether Vial post sideboard. Access to Containment Priest, Wear Tear, uh, even Council's Judgment, Pithing Needle as answers. I, I do like Monastery Mentor to play to the board more as well. Yeah, that way, if you don't find the Terminus, at least you can keep pace with a lot of the stuff that Itai is bringing to the table. 
Yeah, certain. Now, is something like Gideon too big, or is it actually that, or can he manage it in the matchup? If you can pull ahead, Gideon's great. Um, Gideon's generally less powerful in the matchups where your opponent is actively attacking you. Uh, sure, they can actually for, attack and remove a Gideon. Exactly. This is more for the controlling matches. Also, uh, Planeswalkers that cost four versus Phyrexian Revoker is not the best proposition. Sure. Over on Itai Ben Sasan sideboard, 14 different cards. Uh, going through the list here we have on the screen, uh, what do you like against Miracles? Council's judgment's reasonable. There should at least be Jace the Mind Sculptor, some permanence. Sometimes you need to deal with the counterbalance. You know, this card's, this card's fine. Um, is Sword of War and Peace better than something like an Umazawa's Jite here? Maybe he switches up the equipment he has the in the main? Jite is not, not the most exciting. Um, you might prefer a Sword of Feast and Famine to War and Peace, but War and Peace can at least push through a lot of damage, especially if you are playing on Brennan's End Step with Aether Vial. Equipping the sword is pretty easy, and you can get in for a lot of damage that way. Um, something like P and Kieran Nalar is totally reasonable just because it's one card and it's worth three different bodies. Sure, that's actually outside of a Terminus. That can be hard to remove for the Miracle deck. Mm -hmm. You can bring in a Leon Relic Warder as well. That'll answer a lot of the stuff in Brennan's deck. Um, if you're able to get a Vial out, you can Vial that in, get rid of their Counterbalance if that's a problem for you. Though if you control Vial, Counterbalance is likely not a huge issue. Sure. Has the Pithing Needle as well. That one usually coming in against Miracles to name Sensei's Divining Top. Yeah, shutting off top is pretty important against Miracles. It's really their most important card. So in the first game, we saw Itai kind of use a lot of those toolbox creatures to help establish a lock against Brennan. Magus of the Moon, Sanctum Prelate, these are one ofs. Mm -hmm. Or Magus, two of. And the Magus, it worked out in game one, though this is not the matchup where it really shines. As you see, Brennan has Blood Moons in his sideboard himself. His deck's very heavy on basic lands. Um, you might see Itai trim at least on that Magus of the Moon down to one in the deck, so he can at least tutor for it if the game ends up in a weird spot. But it's entirely possible that those just come out entirely. A card that Itai doesn't have that a lot of Death and Taxes players have for this matchup is Cataclysm. That one actually deals with the Miracle's mana base in a very significant way. Right, that one, yeah, Cataclysm card forcing him to sack down on lands. Mm hmm. Second game in a row, looks like Brennan going to six cards. For Brennan DeCanio, we mentioned a lot he's won two opens here in season one. But includes start, starting at the Invitational in Atlanta, won the open. The 27-year-old from Long Island, New York, has four open top eights and two wins. I mentioned that these have all come very recently. Um, and in a, in a variety of, of formats here, we saw with black, green, uh, in standard when taking down an open. I was one of really the innovators there with, with kind of the, the delirium and aggro archetype. Frequently mistaken for Andrew Garfield of the amazing Spider-Man fame. I caught some flack for expressing that I enjoyed this film a lot earlier this week. So, I liked the Garfield Spider-Man. I know he's not the kid anymore. They got a new kid with the Avengers. I enjoyed The Amazing Spider-Man. The second one kind of sucked, but I enjoyed The Amazing Spider-Man. So I always liked Spider-Man comics. Uh, I like I like it when the superheroes just, you know, just banter and do a lot of, like, they just they, they just talk smack the whole time while fighting crime, and Spider-Man yeah. definitely fits into your that. Your Spider-Mans, your Iron-Mans, your Deadpool. Right, right. That's way more interesting to me than a, than a Superman. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just really enjoyed the choreography for The Amazing Spider-Man, because he's fighting the lizard. And you're like, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, you just punched into everything, didn't matter how big it was. He was just like not a very good fighter. Whereas in sure, The Amazing sure. Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield, he's doing a lot of stuff, like using his web shooters in close range combat against this giant monster, just to be, just use more finesse in his combat style. It was way more entertaining and realistic. Just like punching everything in the face doesn't work if you're scrappy little Spider-Man. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like Superman's best move. Yeah, like if you're Superman, great. <laughs> Spider-Man's just not Superman. Brennan, keeping on five, scry to the bottom. We'll see what he can put together here for our second game. Brendan Candio has more of a look of a Spider-Man than a Superman, too. It oh. works. Well, he does have the glasses, really nice hair. He could be a Clark Kent. 
Clark Kent, sure, but not Superman. Superman doesn't wear glasses. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Turn one mother of runes from Itai Ben Sasan is going to be hit by swords to plowshares. Looks like Brennan's, despite being on a mulligan to five, Brennan has a pair of lands and a counterbalance. You see his turn two play will be counterbalance. He also has another Swords to Plowshares in hand. He's definitely going to make a game of this. And Itai did not lead on Aether Vial. So this counterbalance is going to be more relevant than it would be in a lot of these games. If he's able to produce a Sensei's Divining Top for here, from here, that could be very significant. Going to be Spirit of the Labyrinth. Brennan attempts to blind counter Cavern of Souls on top of his deck. Not going to work just now. Spirit of the Labyrinth, that's going to make a number of the cards in Brennan's deck less effective from this point. Yeah, Brennan does have another source to plowshares. He's never decide just when he wants to spend it. So yes, Spirit of the Labyrinth is annoying, but at the same time, there's a lot of great creatures out of Itai's deck. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Brennan has sided in and actually drawn his Gideon ally as Endicar. So if Itai casts any spell and Brennan sees that the top card of his deck is a white source for that Gideon, oh, yeah, that's, that's going to influence that decision on when to cast the Swords of Plowshares. Cavern of Souls now for Itai. That's going to make that counterbalance matter less. He can at least still reveal the check. Yeah, it's on human. Sanctum Prelate shows Sensei's Divining Top on Brennan's deck. He's going to swords away the Spirit of the Labyrinth, but I bet that Sanctum Prel is going to be put to one. Mm, and that's a big reason why you see Brennan cast that swords right away. Doesn't want to not be able to cast that, because once the Sanctum Prelate is in play, that, that one is just there. This Sanctum Prelate card is so rude. Look at it. It's just, ugh. It's just another reason why combo is at a rough spot. <laughs> that card's so good. This card was a significant addition to Death and Taxes. This was another one. This one is more obviously immediately good than Leovold was. I think that Leovold's a better card in play, but clearly this card is very messed up in its own right. So this second Cavern of Souls is on Elemental, and that's because Itai has a Flicker Wisp. Brennan trying to blind counter it. Shows a two. It's counter spell. And I think you're kind of showing when you mentioned that uh, Gideon is only medium here. At this point, if Brennan were to even get the Gideon in its hand in play, it's unclear to me if it's even good on the board. It dies to Flicker Wisp pretty quickly. Brennan draws the copy of Counterspell. Itai, though, heads up. He's going to go up, use Rashad and Port on the Tundra during upkeep. So Brennan does not have double blue up. Not to mention that this double cavern is going to make it really hard to leverage that Counterspell whatsoever. Yeah, one on Elemental, one on Human. That should cover most of Itai's creatures. Mm. And Itai not attacking with Sanctum Prelate. He does not want to just walk that into a Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, second Flicker Wisp for Itai. Ben and Brennan's going to try to blind counter again off the counter bounce. It, it doesn't matter even if he does hit, though, right? This is Cavern of Souls. Right. It still works here. So see, he lets the trigger lapse. And a nice trick there by Itai. So he used his Flicker Wisp to remove his own fl second Flicker Wisp. When it came back on Itai's end step, it exiled Brennan's land, which then meant Brennan's land didn't come back until his own end step. This card does a lot of really powerful stuff. Swing for six, puts the Candio down to seven. See Brennan's hand, just a, some one mana. Non-creature spells, Brainstorm, Sensei's Divining Top, Counter Spell in the face of Double Cavern. Itai will play a third Flicker Wisp and you repeat the same trick. And this should just about do it for the second game in a row. The Mono White deck has locked out its control opponent. And by blinking away that Tundra, Brennan can't even Miracle a Terminus. Just Island Cavern of Souls there for the mana base. Caracas was the draw. His land comes back, but Itai has enough power to end the game here. Mm -hmm. And with a swing of nine in the air, he's going to, okay, Venser, Shaper Savant, bounces a Flicker Wisp. This, I guess, gives Brennan a chance to Miracle a Terminus. Yep, now he does have two white sources on the battlefield. But he's going to have to do it blind. 
He's going to have to do it blind. He's going to have to do it now. Then an Itai's Itai side, it, it makes a good amount of sense just to connect for the six here and pass the turn because Terminus is the only thing that actually keeps yeah. Brennan in the game. Well, he might use like do something like Pithing Needle Sensei's Divining Top again, say if Terminus well, he is... he can't in... cast that because he still has the Sanctum Oh, right, yeah, right, it's both players. Okay. Mm. Largely just thinking about whether or not to recommit that third Flicker Wisp. Yeah, and if, if your opponent's only solution here is Terminus, there's really no point in making another flyer. Mm hmm He's got a Thalia Guardian of Thraben in hand as well. That one doesn't matter a ton. If he had two Rashadden ports, this, this would all be really easy to solve. He's going to go ahead and cast a Flicker Wisp, do the same trick. Flicker Wisp comes back. On end step, it's going to remove or exile Brennan's land. I suppose actually what Itai could do there is he could have exiled one of his own creatures. So mm -hmm. then Terminus would happen, and it would come back on his end step and still kill Brennan. Yeah. But either way, the Terminus doesn't happen, so in two games, it's going to be Itai Ben Sasan winning there.